Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 12.11 Low Elo tier list. Our regular tier list which we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. But we kept moving champs like Jace and Akali up on the tier list since when played perfectly those champs are pretty broken. But the thing is, people in the gold to plat level don't play perfectly. That's why we recently made a high elo tier list to differentiate what's objectively the best when played to perfection versus a realistic performance in the middle elos. And that got us thinking. Why not also make a tier list for the lower levels of play too? I know it's tempting to try and lock in what the pros and high elo streamers play, but trust me, the best thing to do for climbing is acknowledging that sometimes some champs are a bit too hard to pull off until you get better at some of the fundamentals of the game. And conversely, some champs are way better at lower levels because your enemies aren't as coordinated or don't have the game knowledge and mechanics needed to counter them. So with all that said, let's get into this tier list, shall we? As always, let's start our list with the top laners. Darius gets promoted to the A tier. Objectively speaking, Darius is actually super strong right now. Longer fights means an easier time stacking up his passive, at which point you can overpower most foes. But Darius isn't the absolute mindless champ that a lot of people say. That's just frustration speaking. You actually need good wave management skills to properly abuse your lane opponent or you'll just end up shoving into them constantly and end up unable to bully them. And worse, it also means you're overextending and probably just gonna be camped to death by the enemy jungler. In higher elos where players have the skills to do that mastered, he's easily an S tier pick. But in silver and under, which this video is aimed at, you don't see too many people with perfect wave management. That said, wave management is also a very learnable skill, so maybe with a bit of help from our coaches at ProGuides.com, you can push yourself to the level you need to be at to make a bully like Darius an absolutely broken pick. Malphi, Orn, and Sejuani are all being demoted to the A tier. We're lumping them all together because all three belong here for the exact same reason. We thought tanks would actually be a lot stronger with a durability patch, and with damage being lower, it seemed to make sense that engage, disruption, and any other utility would be worth more. But tanks actually are overall doing a lot worse than before, with most of them being B tier at best on 12.10. This new patch brings some decent buffs to some of their items, so we think all three of these guys are around the A tier now, but probably on the weaker end of it. Unless you get a really good counter matchup, you aren't gonna have some huge impact on the game. They're just good picks if you're the type of player who wants to engage fights and let your teammates do the carrying. Urgot gets demoted to the A tier. We thought he would be one of the really strong picks on this patch, but overall, he's been just above average. He still scales well, but so many of the strong champs in the current meta are really good against him in lane, and he doesn't actually get the chance to come online in time. Maybe once Riot puts out another couple of balance patches, he'll be in a better spot, but for now, he's just a weak A tier pick. Just like Urga, we thought this patch would really favor Yorick. He likes more extended fights and tends to become a late game monster. Since this kind of fight favors both of those things, it just makes sense, but instead he's falling way short of our expectations. He's good, but just nowhere near what we thought he would be. Volibear has been demoted to the B tier. This one's a bit tricky, he's been performing meh on patch 12.10. This patch is nerf in Riftmaker, the item he builds more often, but is also buffing Frostfire, the mythic he builds less but already does better with. All in all, it's a tough call to say where he's really going to land. He'll definitely at least be a good counter pick to certain matchups, but it's too hard to say if he deserves to be any higher yet. Aatrox gets demoted to the C tier. This doesn't really have much to do with the current meta. Aatrox had just never really been a great pick in the lower ranks. He's pretty difficult to pull off both mechanically and because he spikes at weird times. He also just hard loses to most of the strong meta picks in this role right now. Irelia also gets demoted to the C tier. Like Aatrox, she's just a champion that really never fares too well in the lower ranks, especially in top lane. Other bruisers and juggernauts are just generally going to overpower you if you don't have crazy good mechanics. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Master Yi gets demoted to the S tier. Master Yi is pretty much the god of low elo. For one, he has a really low skill floor. Two, he scales insanely well, and since low elo games really have a habit of dragging out, you'll almost always come online. 
But this patch, we're seeing nerfs that specifically target him, as well as Kraken Slayer and Death Stance, two of his core items. He's definitely still gonna be a great easy to use pick, but we think he'll just be shy of being worthy of belonging in the OP tier. But who knows? He's so over the top, maybe this won't be enough to knock him down yet. Viego gets promoted to the A tier. He's definitely a champ that is doing better thanks to the durability changes. Viego is a classic reset champ. He just needs one takedown to be able to start popping off in fights. The changes make it easier to survive long enough to get off that first possession, and then it's all over from there. Nunu gets moved to the B tier. He's been underperforming in all ranks, but in lower elos, he really tends to suffer. The buffs tank items are getting as well as the direct buff to Nunu himself should help a bit, but aren't enough to warrant being any higher than this. He's viable, so you can play him if you really enjoy him, but there are definitely better options. Scion gets demoted to the B tier, pretty similar to Nunu, he's just been overall underperforming lately and the buffs to tank items will help out but won't do enough to push him any higher. Rengar gets demoted to the C tier. Rengar has always been a champ that does a lot worse in lower levels of play, but he's really feeling it now after those durability changes. Even in the best of matchups, there is pretty much always a few better options. Evelyn also gets demoted to the C tier. Unlike Rengar and other assassins, she's not actually all that snowball reliant. She actually takes a bit before you can start consistently getting kills. You need to hit 6 to get her permanent stealth, and even then, you're really only able to reliably get kills when you have your ult. So you'd almost think she'd be better now since most games are going longer and it gives scaling champs time to come online, but higher durability is still making things really tough for her. She just can't burst down targets like she needs to. Ivern is getting demoted all the way down to the D tier. Even in Diamond Plus, where he tends to do best, his win rate is in the red. So down here, he's definitely gonna be doing pretty awfully. Games in lower ranks tend to be a bit more clown fiesta-ish, and that's just not ideal for a champ that wants to do nothing but fight coordinated 5v5s. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Zillion gets promoted up to the OP tier. Usually, we'd be a bit cautious about a move like this. At the end of the day, Zillion is a pretty supporty style champ, and the OP tier is about champs that can absolutely roll games, but he's just doing so well lately that he has to go here. With the game favoring scaling now, you're reaching the point that he comes online in fights extremely consistently now, so if you don't mind not being the main star on the team, he's definitely a champ you can really abuse for some free LP right now. Velkos also gets promoted up to the OP tier. With all champs being so much weaker now, it's a lot safer to constantly shove in and harass opponents under their tower. The same strengths extend out of laning phase as well. It's just a lot easier to navigate team fights as a poke mage when you don't have to worry about over a hundred champs in the game having flash one shot potential against you. We are tentatively moving Swain down to the S tier. I say tentative because I really don't know if this patch is enough to knock him down from the OP level. There may be both direct nerfs to him and indirect nerfs via Leandris, but Swain is so insanely strong right now that he may honestly still be a 1v9 machine post 12.11. I guess only time will tell. Rumble is being moved to the B tier. Now that you can't just run at your opponent and force an all-in in every single lane, he's much more matchup reliant. You'll still really enjoy him as a counterpick to assassins, which is especially nice since those are being buffed on this patch, but against most other foes, you're not gonna have a great time. Trindamir is being demoted to the C tier. Everyone knows Trindamir's favorite trick is spinning in and gambling on enough crits to 100 to 0 his foe. Well, that's a lot harder now that everyone is tankier and he's suffering for it. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Just as with mid lane, Swain gets a tentative move to the S tier down here as well. Again, he may be nerfed, but he's very likely the best pick in bot lane at the moment. So there's still a pretty good chance he just bounces right back up to the OP tier next patch. Tristana gets demoted to the A tier. She's still a reliable carry, but obviously she isn't snowballing as much as before, since forcing all ins is a lot harder. Caitlyn gets promoted up to the B tier. It's hard to say exactly how strong she'll be after these buffs. At the very least, she'll be a lot more lane dominant, making her a really reliable pick for shutting down other strong lane bullies that you normally struggle to handle. 
While Aphelios and Zeri are both getting buffed, bear in mind these champs have never been really great in lower ranks. They're super hard to play and require a team playing around you. We still even have them in the D tier in our goal to plat tier list and honestly, I don't know if they'd be even higher in our diamond plus list. They've just been way too heavily nerfed because of pro play and I doubt Riot is willing to give them buffs for that exact reason. They'll just go back to being ultra dominant pick or ban champs on the big stage. Wrapping up our list, we've got our supports. Sona gets promoted to the OP tier. With games dragging out longer than before, a champ like Sona that plays just to survive early and have a huge impact in mid to late game fights is obviously going to do a lot better. She's criminally underpicked for being so strong, but that's good news for you. You can abuse this champ and get next to guaranteed wins if you can make it past 30 minutes without feeding too much. Zyra and Zerath both get promoted to the OP tier. Their ability to completely dominate the lane is higher than it's ever been and both champs are basically to 1v2 while your AD carry sits back and farms. Velkos is getting promoted to the S tier. He's very similar to the last two poke mages, but he does their job a bit less effectively and with less consistency. Still very oppressive for most other champs to deal with, so if he's your cup of tea, there's definitely nothing wrong with locking him in. Nami gets moved down to the S tier. She's a good lane bully, but she doesn't scale quite as well as the other picks in the OP tier, and scaling is a super important factor now, especially for supports. Swain gets demoted to the A tier here. While we're sure Swain is still going to be very strong in the other roles, being a support means being underleveled and having lower income, so he's gonna be feeling the nerfs a lot more. He'll still be good, just not overwhelmingly strong to the point that he has the same impact as a solo laner in fights. Amumu gets demoted to the B tier. He's still an okay pick if you just want some engage for team fights, but as far as his actual laning goes, he's a lot weaker than before since he's really only able to play for all ins. Yumi also gets demoted to the B tier. She may be a super strong scaling pick, but Yumi just isn't a champ that does very well in lower elos. Early laning may overall be easier post their ability changes, but that doesn't mean making an AD carry play the lane basically 1v2 is a walk in the park. By being attached to your AD carry, you're even more reliant on your teammates and any mistakes they make are also going to catch you in the crossfire. And that about wraps things up for our 12.11 low elo tier list. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involved going over all the champs in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video. But until then, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.